Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for this presentation today. My name is Harlan Svoboda, and I'm the curator of the United States National Arboretum Herbarium in Washington, D.C. The National Arboretum is known for its many living collections, beautiful gardens, and iconic landmarks. But tucked away out of sight is another equally important collection. This is the United States National Arboretum Herbarium. It's composed of 700,000 preserved plant specimens that date back more than 200 years. We're designated as the core repository for preserved plant specimens within the USDA, though we do have specimens of plants from all over the world. Our collection is part of an international network of herbaria, more than 3,500 in total, and between them housing more than 400 million specimens. The herbarium here at the National Arboretum ranks within the top 80 largest in the world and the top 20 largest within the United States. Among the largest herbarium collections in the world are the Kew Royal Botanic Gardens in London, the French Natural History Museum in Paris, and the New York Botanical Garden in the United States. Preserving and cataloging plant specimens is nothing new. In fact, the oldest specimens we know of go back to the 1530s, nearly a full 500 years ago. Luca Ghini at the University of Bologna in Italy was the first person known to have collected and preserved plants for the classes that he was teaching at the university. Though his specimens didn't survive, those of some of his students did, and they are still housed at the university's herbarium. Within any given folder in the herbarium, there could be specimens of endangered species, cultivars that you can't buy anymore, or even new species that are just waiting to be discovered and described. One of the strengths of the National Arboretum's Herbarium is its collection of cultivated plant specimens. Many of these represent plants that the National Arboretum has developed and can still be found in gardens all across the country. The Herbarium has specimens of economically important plants, ethnobotanical specimens, and plant introductions brought in by the USDA. In addition to flat specimens, the herbarium also preserves a variety of other items, including big, bulky fruits and cones, and historical books with plants pressed inside of them. The National Arboretum actually has a second, separate collection of preserved plant specimens on its grounds. This is the United States National Seed Herbarium. It's composed mainly of glass vials of seeds and bags of smaller fruits. It's used primarily as a resource for identifying plant species, especially invasive ones. So how do we go from a living plant out in the woods, or even in your garden, to something like this? A preserved plant specimen that will last potentially hundreds of years stored in the herbarium. Well, that process of collecting, pressing, and drying plants, or vouchering, is actually quite simple. Well, it might look something like this. Here I am exploring the forests of Maryland, and I've got my plant field press with me. It's composed of two adjustable straps, two wooden frames on either side that have a lattice design, some newspaper that I got from my local city, cardboard planks. These can also be cut up from cardboard boxes to fit the size of your press. And finally, some blotters, which are thick, absorbent paper that help wick water away from the plant specimen. Once I've chosen a plant to press, I can begin the vouchering process. It starts with good data. That would include things like the taxonomic identification of the plant, my name is the collector, and also the date, as well as information about the site, like what habitat it's growing in, what other plants are around it, or maybe even what the soil condition is like. I also want to collect morphological data about the plant itself. What is the leaf arrangement? How tall is the plant? Does it have hairs on the leaves? It's also important to write down things that might not preserve very well on the final specimen, like bark, flower color, or maybe even fruit type, size, or color. So now with the data collected, we can move on to the actual collecting process. So here I've clipped my plant, I'm sending it in the pre-prepared newspaper. 
you'll notice I'm flipping one of the leaves over, and this is to make sure that in the final product we get to see all the different parts of the plant. Some leaves are going to be facing upward, some will have the undersides facing up, and then if there were any fruits or flowers, we want to make sure that that is represented as well. I'm going to go ahead and close the newspaper now, making sure to keep things nice and flat. And I'm going to add a piece of blotter paper, and that's the absorbent paper that helps to get the water out of the specimen. I'm adding a cardboard plank, a piece of blotter paper, and I'm going to be setting up some more newspaper to get me ready for the next plant that I'm going to collect. So you're essentially making a sandwich and repeating that each time. Now I've discovered another plant that I want to collect, and luckily this one has some fruits. After collecting the same kinds of data before, I'm going to go ahead and clip this plant as well and bring it to my press. And again, just as before, I'm going to lay it in the newspaper, making sure that at least one leaf has the underside facing up. I'm going to try and spread out the leaves and the fruits as best I can, and then go ahead and close it off with the newspaper. Keeping it flat, I'm going to add a piece of blotter paper to help with absorption, and then a cardboard plank. At this point, after I've collected a couple, or a couple dozen even, I'll go ahead and close off the press. So I'll add my wooden frame, and then make sure that my straps are correctly positioned, and then I'll start to tighten those down. The idea here is to add as much pressure as possible so that the plant is able to dry and become a preserved plant specimen. Once I'm done with the fieldwork portion, I'll bring the press back to the National Arboretum for processing and drying. This is the dryer that we have currently at the Arboretum. It's a pretty simple piece of furniture. It has some incandescent light bulbs underneath with a, a metal tray sitting on top. We use this as a, a heat source. The light bulbs provide a little bit of heat, and there's enough air circulation in the room to help dry out the plants that are in those presses. This is a nice design because it allows us to put several presses onto the drying rack at one time. The presses will stay here for about a week, or more sometimes, depending on what kind of plants are in the press. After about a week, I'll come back and check on the presses to see how they're drying. The plant specimens might not be completely dry inside, but I'll go ahead and retighten the straps to make sure there's enough pressure. At this point, I can either put the press back on the rack for more drying, or if they're completely dry, we can move on to the next phase of the process. It starts with a large sheet of museum quality paper that the specimen will be mounted to. Here we have a specimen that's already been pressed and dried, and the label has already been created from the data that we collected in the field. First, we want to make sure that everything is going to fit on our sheet nicely. So before even gluing anything, I'm going to make sure that the plant is going to fit on the sheet. I'm going to put my label in the bottom right-hand corner. Then we have these little fragment packets, which we'll talk about in a moment. I'm going to put that in the upper left. So it looks like everything is going to fit nicely, no problems here. I'm going to take my glue bottle, and at the Arboretum, we just use simple Elmer's glue because it's non-toxic, acid-free. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of this label. Not too much. You don't want to add too much glue because then that label will become kind of distorted and there's going to be bubbles underneath it. Just enough so that it will attach to the sheet of paper. Then I'm going to use this piece of plastic or anything flat really to help smooth out that label and make sure that there are no glue bubbles underneath. Now it's time to glue 
the plant specimen itself. So again, we're going to use Elmer's glue. And my technique is just to put a little bit of glue on every leaf, on every stem, on every fruit, just to make sure that they're all going to be adhered to the paper nicely. Now again, you're not going to need a lot of glue, but here I'm putting just a little dab on each fruit. I'm making sure that any of the leaves that are going to be in contact with the paper have at least one strip of glue on it. And notice I'm not going overboard, I'm not adding a lot, just enough to make sure that it's going to be permanently adhered to the paper. Likewise with the stems, I don't want to add too much glue, but I do want to make sure that they're going to be glued down and attached to the paper permanently. So I'm going to add a little bit along each of the stems, and then finally the main stem at the bottom. And finally, the moment of truth. We're going to very carefully and very gently flip that specimen over so that the glue side is facing the paper. We have little weights that we'll put on the specimen at various points to make sure that nothing is flipping up, making sure that all the different parts are going to be in contact with the paper as the glue dries. The idea here is to make sure that as many of the plant parts as possible are in contact with the paper. Next, we're going to want to make sure that our fragment packet is attached to the sheet. Now this is important because oftentimes there's going to be some leaf fragments or maybe some loose fruits that have fallen off in the newspaper. We don't want to get rid of them because it could be useful for future research opportunities. So we'll go ahead and put them into the little envelope and then close it. So let's try another specimen that might be a little more challenging. We're going to start off the same way, without ever gluing anything first. We're going to make sure that everything is going to fit onto our sheet of paper. So in this case we have a sedge, which is a grass-like plant. I'm going to make sure that we have room for the label. I always put it in the bottom right-hand corner. Make sure that the plant will fit. And again, I'm going to add my fragment packet to the top left. Now because this is kind of a dainty and rather unruly little plant, I'm going to opt to go for a different mounting method instead of glue. This is an archival quality cloth tape with water-activated adhesive on the back. Before attaching anything, I want to make sure that I have the strips at the correct length. So I'm going to put a couple of long ones there to hold the bulk of the plant specimen. And then I've got a couple smaller ones that I'm going to put in strategic places to make sure that nothing major comes loose or pops up. Using a damp sponge, I'll activate the adhesive on the back so that it's sticky enough to attach to the paper. One by one, I'll add the strips to the specimen, making sure that I don't get any of the sticky parts on the plant itself. The technique here is just to wet the ends of the strip so that they're attached to the paper, and then pull it tight enough so that the plant sits flat on the sheet. And I'll do this until all the strips have been added to the sheet, and we have a nice, fully mounted specimen, including the label and the fragment packet. So from a dead plant sitting in an old newspaper, we have now transformed it into a plant specimen worthy of preservation in the National Arboretum Herbarium. Sometimes plants, or parts of them, just simply don't press very well. In those cases, we can dry them out, put them in bags, and then into these storage boxes so that they can be incorporated into the herbarium as well. At this point, we have a fully mounted, cataloged specimen that's ready to be filed away into the herbarium collection. To figure out where it goes in the herbarium, we'll need some basic information, 
like the taxonomic name or maybe the family that it belongs to, and then the searching begins. To ensure that the specimen ends up in the right place, we must be accurate and meticulous to make sure that we find the exact folder where that specimen will be filed. Once located, we'll bring that folder out so that the specimen can be added to it. After we've verified that the name is indeed correct and should be going in this folder, we can add it to the rest of the specimens that match that taxonomy. Sometimes getting to the right folder can be like trying to find a needle in a haystack, but luckily we've got it here. At this point, we can add the specimen to the folder that contains other specimens of that same species. We'll go ahead and put the other folders on top so that the order remains the same. We will repeat this process for all of the new specimens that have come in, ensuring that they're filed away properly. So now that our plant has been pressed, dried, mounted, and then filed away in the herbarium collection, what comes next? Well, let's say you're a researcher that wants to study this exact specimen. Normally, you'd have to make the trek all the way over to Washington, D.C., which, depending on where you are, could be a very long and expensive trip. Alternatively, we could loan the specimens by shipping them out to you, but specimens often get damaged in transit, not to mention they could get lost in the mail. So. We're increasingly turning to digitization to make sure that our specimens can be accessed by people all over the world. Starting in 2021, our entire 700,000 specimen herbarium at the United States National Arboretum was digitized, transforming our once completely analog collection into one of high resolution images and digital records. Getting to that point was no easy task though. It involved handling every single specimen in the herbarium collection applying barcodes, looking for insect damage, removing staples, tape, and paper clips, and ensuring that they were ready to be imaged. This also meant that we had to move 700,000 specimens. So eight hours a day, five days a week, for about a year, we were constantly loading and unloading carts to bring them to the conveyor for imaging. After imaging, the specimens would have to be taken back into the herbarium and the process would start all over again. Once inside the on-site imaging room, the specimens would be delivered to one end of the conveyor, where an operator would carefully, one by one, put them onto the conveyor belt. Slowly and methodically, the sheets move down the conveyor belt to the camera where they're about to be imaged. This is a camera eye view of the specimens as they pass through the imaging tent and out the other side. A laser within the belt ensures that the specimen is in the proper position and then an image is captured. At the other end of the conveyor, another operator carefully removes the specimens one by one from the belt. The conveyor belt can only move forward the length of one specimen at a time, and only if there is no specimen in the final position. Lasers within the belt ensure that no specimens fly off the end of the conveyor. This method was so efficient that we were able to capture about 5,000 images every single day, allowing us to image the entire 700,000 specimen collection in just about 11 months. The final phase of our project is to take those images and the other data that we gathered from the specimens and turn them into a fully searchable, accessible online catalog. Being able to access our specimens online by anyone anywhere in the world is going to transform how our specimens can be used and appreciated. 
So we've now come full circle from a plant that's been collected in the field to being dried and processed, to being mounted onto a sheet of paper, filed into the herbarium collection for permanent preservation, and then finally digitized for the whole world to enjoy. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention today, and hope to see you on your next trip to the United States National Arboretum.